Hello everyone and welcome to the Apex Online Racing GT3 PC Elite League. Whew, what a mouthful. And it's round three and we're at the Red Bull Ring and as you see there's a couple of issues with connections. Uh, and I'd, obviously this isn't my pole lap uh, and there's a reason for that. So if you have a look in the rear view mirror and I will look behind myself in a second. There you go. You see Tej Peck. Look how fast he can catch me up on this track. Now, I'm usually faster than Tej Peck on, the, on these uh, races. Now, he's, he's obviously in the Ferrari, I'm in the Audi R8. And the thing I'm trying to show here is that altitude is a big issue at the moment in terms of the balance of performance with these cars. So, at altitude, a turbo car isn't as affected as an NA car. So, to give you an example, at Dubai, the Ferrari and the Audi were running around the same horsepower, or I believe they were anyway. Here, we are 50 horsepower down on the Ferrari. 50! It's absolutely nuts. And as you can see, it's just catching, catching, catching. Now watch this. I am flat out. I do not lift. I am going the full rev range because I want a qu clean quality lap. Tejpek goes to the outside. Look at how much he just accelerates past. He gets like another gear from somewhere. That's like a nos button. Straight past. Through he goes. Uh, and then coming to this last corner. Um, just watch how fast he accelerates away. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I'll watch my reaction in a minute. This one's quite funny. Um, where, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we <laughs> Oh dear. Um, so at this point, we know we're not going to do very well against Ferraris and BMWs. Uh, we qualify 12th here um, initially, 129.7. However, I say initially because the lobby has a bit of a bad moment. So we do a 10 minute quick session and I go from 12th down, down, down the order. Oh god, wait till you see this. 19th, I uh, qualify. Only two tips off what I did last time. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty close to the limit in terms of what our setup has and stuff. We did have a run where we were actually up, but uh, even so, uh, we lost out towards the end. So the race, it's raining. We've got our first wet race in god knows how long on Project Cars 2. Um, it's foggy as well, so the temperature's down. And... As you can tell by the length of this video, it's a blimmin' long race. So it is an eventful race. It's one of the best races I've ever done in terms of having to drive. So while I may not be on the limit, I'm on the limit in terms of men like my mentality. Because the one of the good things about Project Cars 2, one of the best things actually that it's brought to sim racing or racing games or whatever you want to call it, is Live Track 3.0. These puddles on the track grow, they shrink, uh, dry lines appear. Uh, wetter lines appear, you get rubber, you get dirt, oh it's amazing. But we've started off the race now after our manual warm up per uh, lap and we've got the Porsche on the left hand side, we've just got to be careful, into the first corner we've been very careful here, cold tyres, cold brakes. We are on default setup again, obviously we just changed the radiator and the brake ducts as we did at Dubai. Uh, I don't know much else about the setup, uh, but even so we are continuing on with the racing. As we come into this right hander, again, breaking 60, 70 meters earlier. Look at the TV camera. It's a traffic jam up there. Three wide through there. I think Nutella and Nick Mido uh, just have a bit of contact there. But three wide coming into this sharp right hander. Now, this is a tricky corner to go three wide. Uh, so they go back to two here. We've lost the position there to the Porsche. And we've got Doc now on our left hand side. He's taking advantage of that. Nesto. Just in behind then, another Audi R8. Now, Nesto's my teammate in this. We've teamed up now. Um, I think we're called GTA Aces. Uh, so, a mixture of uh, GTA Racing and the uh, 5 Aces team. And uh, you can just see Dot gets a position there. That BMW turbocharged. I know Nesto's not going to be really aggressive here. So, I can just focus on settling down and trying to get into a rhythm. We know there's going to be accidents in this race. It is absolutely pouring down. If we come through here, look at the puddle forming there on the right hand side. It's small at the moment. Watch that thing grow. I'll tell you that now. Uh, as we continue on uh, towards the end of this first lap now. And, oh man, look, just look at it. We've got spray from everywhere. There's cars everywhere. Look at the TV camera. There's just cars everywhere. Up front, there's Nutella going side by side with Raygor there. Uh, we've got Wheeler having to defend from Doc. A uh, mixture of all sorts of cars, so that's the nice thing about the wet race, is that the advantage of the turbo cars isn't there as much <laughs> as it was in qualifying. So at least we can have some fun here. Um, now, AOR is very, 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 very strict on making sure that two wheels stay on the white line. So if you do go two wheels over, you have to give that time back. And that uh, is mentioned on Discord a couple of times um, to make sure that drivers do do that. 
We go to the outside here because I noticed Wheeler just a bit slow into the corner. I'm hoping Doc will pull me along a little bit here. Um, we get an all right run, but uh, let's see what we do versus the Porsche now. Uh, we're side by side, heading towards this right hander. It's a very tricky corner this because the car just doesn't want to stop because it's downhill. Um, you've got to brake early. You just see a mistake by somebody there. That's the leading NA car of McCoy. Um, so that's him gone. Uh, and that's my aim in this race, by the way. And it's always been my aim in every single race. You just see that pull down the right side. Is to be the lead NA car or lead non-Ferrari car. Whichever <laughs> whichever happens. Obviously, in this case, being the lead NA car is like a victory in itself. Because it's like a multi-class race uh, in terms of the difference. Uh, Project Cars 2 are looking into the balance of performance, by the way. So let's hope they do something with that. As we just see, we got on the inside of Wheeler. Wheeler had to let off there because of Nutella. That's given us an advantage. If you look on TV camera, we're side by side. And look on the rear view now. We're ahead of Wheeler. And we get that position. Uh, so that's awesome stuff. Now, Nutella goes wide here. And I was expecting him to give up that position, but he doesn't. Um, is that naughty? Is it not? I don't know. Personally, I think he probably should have given that back because he would have got a penalty if the game was that strict. But we'll continue racing all the same. There's loads of time to get this position back. So we've made one position so far in this race. You just see Nutella making a move on Doc there into the first corner. Again, just a couple of uh, wheels offline there. But in that situation, the guys are overtaking each other. I think that's a bit more fair game. As we continue towards the sharp right-hander. Uh, just going back to the balance of performance. Project Cars 2 have said they're looking into the balance of performance. So hopefully they can do stuff. Obviously, we're doing our balance of performance on GT Sports. Uh, the video series. So let's, let's hope they do something similar. Pick a selection of tracks. Simulate altitude, simulate you know zero altitude, uh, to factor in quite a lot of stuff, and hopefully we can have a balanced field. I mean, imagine if this was just a little bit more balanced in terms of GT3 class. Oh, I mean, 30 cars on track is just awesome. You've seen it on the TV camera in multiple of these races now. It looks good, and look up ahead. There's just a line of cars. It's amazing. Who would think that racing in 18th position is so much fun? Um, if you haven't noticed my T-shirt, by the way, I'm apparently the stick. Uh, let's see how that handles with the, with the rest of the race. Uh, you just see the queue of cars there now. Everybody trying to get into a rhythm, trying to make positions. I'm quite good at this corner, you'll find. So throughout the race, I can nail that corner very well. I'm just avoiding the puddles there. I'm looking to try and make a move on Nutella. I go to the right side as I got a good run, uh, but we're not gaining anything here. On to the inside. We break quite late. Give him room on the outside. Oh, this is close. This is very close. Coming to it towards the last corner. Do we do it? We don't. We have to give room there. And uh, I was worried about a short penalty on the inside. So we're going to have to carry on again. Nesto just giving me room here. He could attack at this point, but doesn't. You see, he lets off there. Um, he knows that we could probably make more progression as a team. Um, if one guy gets past, then the next person can probably follow. Nutella going off again here. Again, he really should give that back at that point. As you see, I put my hand up at that point because it's two times now. You do have to give the gaps back. They have said that in AOR. You need to make sure you do that. Continue on racing all the same. We've got 51 minutes of racing still to go. Um, obviously, parts of that quiet down a little bit because the video is only like 30 odd minutes long. But uh, that's still most of the race that you're about to watch of battling and craziness. As you see on the TV camera, there's still cars two, three wide up front ahead of us. So anything can happen in this race. Coming into this right-hander, you just see now up ahead, there's a car off. And Nutella makes a mistake as well. Iceman's off. That's unfortunate for Iceman. Uh, Iceman, a cracking racer. We've seen him a lot in the ESL. But we're up now three positions. We're up to 16th position. Uh, and our goal here is to make as many positions as we can. So, coming through this left-hander, you can still see the battling up ahead. Look at that. The first two have really shot away. So, Jardier and Leon really shot away. Oh, Doc makes a mistake on that. Left-hander just clips the grass. Goes for a spin up another position, up to 15th. As I was saying, Jardier and Leon have escaped the field. Tejpek, I think, is leading this pack of cars. Um, or it could actually be the car behind. I'm not sure who's in fourth. I can't see. Too much spray. Uh, but uh, there's fourth there. Third. Now, I think third is in there. As you see, uh, who's that going side by side? Raygor just overtaking Murphy. Murphy in the Janetta. A, a quite a slow car in terms of GT3 class. But Murphy giving it a good representation here. Uh, and we've got a good battle with Murphy coming up now. So we're looking to try and overtake Murphy. He just gives me enough room there uh, on the left. Rygor just makes a big mistake into turn one after that mistake. So we go up to 14th position. So now we're looking to try and take 13th off uh, Murphy now. Now the Audi is slightly faster than this Ginetta. 
uh, as we come up to this sharp right hander so I'm thinking okay let's try and go for the cut back is it going to work coming to here Murphy gives me loads of room on the um, outside so I can't really do the cut back because he's got the apex and uh, I'm worried about Nutella a little bit now behind because he's in the Ferrari and the Ferrari is a quicker car as we head down towards this right hander again I'm just looking to see where I can overtake Murphy can break much later than me into this corner you see me constantly adjusting the brakes there that's how slippy this is especially that corner it's extremely slippy you see this pull is growing all the time everyone having to avoid it that's the great thing about this live track 3.0 you have to avoid puddles and it changes I mean how good is that with racing every time you get to a corner potentially something has changed and you have to adapt your line that is proper racing uh, and honestly it's so well done in Project Cars too. so really fair play to them as we come through here look at that we're just having to avoid that puddles growing there on the right hand side uh, and again we're still looking to try and overtake Murphy uh, so we get towards the end of this lap what lap is this because it's gone well too quick lap number six this is it uh, that we're on at the moment uh, Murphy taking a good line there look at that he's using every bit of the track as we lose Nick Mido there uh, so the Nissan's struggling a little bit so he loses on the last corner up to 13th trying to get 12th position now off Murphy as we head towards the first corner and uh, again we're trying to look for the cutback or try and force a mistake off Murphy uh, and through we go so side by side he gives me room there very well played by Murphy uh, we've just got the overlap here so we've got a good run coming up to this um, uh, right hander sorry we've got the slight left into the right hander uh, and again I'm going to look for the cutback here now he knows that I ran wide last time so perhaps he might think I try might go for the same line so I break much earlier this time and I'm trying to go for a really tight cutback. There's nearly an accident behind by Ernesto and Nutella, but we get side by side with Murphy again. But we get a really good run out of the corner and we get the position off Murphy up to 12th. Woo! Woo! And my voice is going already. I'm not even halfway through the video. Uh, ha! So, uh, we nearly make a mistake there. But we are going to merge the clips now. Watch this for a merge. Pow pow! Now, there we go. Look at that. One minute later. We're one lap later. Still in 12th position. Put a tiny bit of a gap to Murphy. Nest up behind Murphy. Uh, we've got Rilo up ahead. We've got Vernux up there uh, and Steve. So now all up ahead of us is just turbocharged cars. So with a lead NA car. So I'm quite happy about this at the moment. Uh, and uh, we're going to now try and push to try and catch up to these guys. Because if they start battling, we can make more positions. As you see, we're 23 seconds behind the leader. At one point in this race, I'm worried that I'm going to get lapped. I don't, I don't want to ever get lapped. Uh, the only time I get lapped is if I'm in the lower class to uh, another group of racers. So LMP2 versus GT3 and I'm in GT3. Uh, as you just see there, that's uh, Ascaro Adalexis there has made a mistake on the last turn. Up to 11th position now. Uh, and we're still making ground to 19th to 11th. We're doing a pretty good job so far. As we advance a bit further in the race now. Uh, just a lap, I think it is. So it might have been two. I didn't really pay much attention to that merge. I can't remember how I edited this. Even so, we continue on racing. Uh, look at the TV camera. There's action all over the show with Nutella, Nesto and Murphy. Uh, however, we're trying to catch up to Rilo as quick as we can. As uh, we hit this right-hander once again, you can just see this group of cars is still here. So we've got plenty of time to uh, get more positions in this race. So I am hoping for top 10 at this point. Uh, I think that would be a cracking result for this Audi R8 at this circuit. It's definitely not an R8 circuit, as I've shown you earlier on in the video, where Tejpec overtook me as if I was standing still, or at least in a different class. So coming into this right-hander, Rilo just makes a little bit of a mistake there. Runs a bit too wide. Very easy to do in these conditions. See that puddle has grown even more there. <laughs> that's what I, lo I just love. That every get that this is like that's like a benchmark for any racing game now. If you're going to put weather in to have that dynamic change on circuit because it does change the rating substantially. You've seen me crash out with the puddles. Look at that puddle on the left now. Can't even hit the apex. Cannot even hit the apex because of the puddle. And that puddle's growing there. I've got to be careful that because I'm running really close to it now. So we're trying to scare Rilo there um, into a mistake by just showing my nose a little bit and be like, hi Rilo, let me through. It seems to work here. So I go through there. I try and give him room to come back on. And uh, through into 10th position. Woohoo, top 10, what? Here we go. So we're going to try and push now towards Vernux. Um, but obviously these are turbocharged cars. So it's going to take a lot more work than uh, some of the previous overtaking moves we've done. Uh, but even so, we never, ever, ever give up. So through there we go. And we're going to be careful of Rilo still here. Because obviously the Ferrari is still powerful. Oh, we just see some contact on the TV camera there. Don't know if you caught that. That was Stephen Popsu. 
um, as they head up towards the uh, right hander now and uh, just coming into the braking zone so braking around 110 yeah. meter board really as we accelerate out and there's contact again between Steve and Popsu we get another position ninth place so that obviously helps me because Vernox gets slowed up by the instant so oh, here we go we're battling for sixth position now um, obviously we've raced Vernox loads and loads of times really great racer really clean racer um, Vernox has actually sent some video clips for the crash video as well so they should be good fun I know that was meant to come out a couple of weeks ago but uh, hey we've been doing tons of racing um, and while this is a long video wait until you see the GT Sport commentary come in um, because you'll have the live version which is nearly two hours 40 or the highlight version which is under an hour uh, but it's got some good action in there even so we're here racing with Vernox so Vernox in the BMW M6 uh, we've got Steve in the Ferrari and I'm in the R8 so you just see there the BMW pulling away uh, as does the Ferrari so I've got to really be smart here with the way I overtake I've got to look at corners braking zones Vernox just runs a little bit wide there um, and uh, through we go so as I say you've got, we've got to be able to look at how can we overtake these guys we can't beat them on out, outright pace we've got to be smart so I am thinking braking zones mainly oh I forgot about that <laughs> that's uh, Yorkie uh, having a bit of a lag spike scared the crap out of me <laughs> oh just a random guard just appearing out of nowhere um, so that puts us into 8th position actually because Yorkie was ahead of us or was he behind us oh, I don't know Scares the crap out of us anyway. Let's continue racing. So, uh, you can just see Vernox and Steve just pulling away a little bit here. Coming into this right hander. Steve makes a mistake. Vernox makes a mistake. I have a little bit of a wiggle, but Vernox just can't get the power down. That's the one thing with the BMW. It struggles to get his power down. Up to seventh position. Yes, right. Okay, we're going to advance a little bit further in the race now. 15 minutes to go. That's a big, big jump. So, Steve's caught up to Andrex. We've slowly caught up to Andrex and Vernox has uh, been behind me. There has been a few uh, close calls with Vernox here and there, but we've uh, carried on pushing all the same. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is now pretty much a race to the end because this is about to get even crazier than the first part of the race. First part of the race was good because you had all the cars on screen, there was accidents. Watch the racing here because this is unbelievable stuff. So we catch up to Andrex and Steve in the braking zone. Now one thing Andrex said in his driver introduction is that he brakes earlier than most people. So I, I've got that sort of knowledge in the back of my mind. I did remember that. Uh, he's actually running the VP livery as well. So shout out to VP. Obviously we highly respect VP as um, uh, a racing team. They're very clean drivers, very fair drivers. Uh, and it's good that Andrex is representing them. I go for a cheeky move up the inside due to a mistake. But Steve gets a good run out of that corner. Uh, as, as does Andrex. Andrex is going to have the inside. So I'm sort of going to let him go a little bit here. Obviously I can see he breaks a bit early there. He's trying to give me room. I come back in behind. Uh, but yes. Shout out to VP. And it's nice that Andrex is using that. Because Andrex is a really clean racer as well. Um, as you can see this puddle has grown absolutely massively now. And I'm, what I'm trying to do there is I'm trying to cut back a little bit earlier to straighten this bit out. To give me enough power to keep up with the BMW and the Ferrari. Now I believe Andrex was running the same aero as me. Obviously we're in different cars. But I think it was like 2.7 or something like that. I'm obviously running standard. So whatever that is I'm running. Um, so obviously that increased pace is just that turbo kicking in. That little bit extra. The BMW doesn't have as much power as the uh, like the power advantage as the Ferrari does um, here at uh, the Red Bull Ring. So, as you can see, we've got double spray here coming into this first corner, side by side again, these two. So I'm thinking, yes, hello, look at this. Uh, but then I realised Vernox is right behind me as well. <laughs> and look at what Vernox does in a minute, this is crazy. It's going to have two by two up into the right hander. You can just see I'm struggling for the pace. I give Vernox a little bit of room on the left hand side, coming into this braking zone. Vernox just backs off a little bit. Um, I'm trying to judge where to go. <laughs> <laughs> Look how close it is. I'm thinking, oh, I could do it, but uh, Andrex just ran a little bit wide there. Just a bit of slip as we continue racing. Look how close it is. Side by side. And just this is where you see the BMW. He's got extra oomph there. Look at that. Uh, but he will have to break a little bit earlier. Um, you got to be a bit careful there. Andrex look, just breaks a little bit later. Again, we're looking to give him room on the outside. Um, I want this to be the fairest and cleanest move possible. Um, and oh, this is just awesome racing. As uh, we continue again to the left. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, I'll try to go around the outside. Andrex gave me room last time. But it's too much. The, the radius of the corner is too much. I can't actually um, get that uh, the, the car around. 
So you just see me now accelerate through there. See how I try and get the jump? Oh, <laughs> don't get drift. Look how, look at the size of that puddle. What is going on there? I forgot how big that puddle gets. Um, but you see how I'm trying to power out straight in the car as much as possible. <laughs> I went a bit Tokyo Drift there. The entire race I've been Tokyo Drifting basically because the car's a bit all over the place in this standard default setup. Uh, but continue pushing. And you just see Andrex has got a bit of a jump on us at the moment so we can car down a little bit. We can breathe. We've got 12 minutes and 30 seconds remaining of the race. Now obviously that could be a bit more because it depends where Giardia is on track, where the race finishes. Uh, but even so, we continue racing. So again, I'm trying to eye up here. So what's going through my mind at this point? I'm trying to eye up where what Andrex is doing, where he's braking, and trying to get an understanding of how he's racing and, and where I've got an advantage over the BMW. As you've seen, the BMW's got a power advantage over me. It can accelerate faster. It struggles on traction. We saw that with Vernux. The slight slide, you just saw it again there with Andrex, struggling to get the power down initially. Um, so I can either do it there or I can do it under braking. So that's my aim at this point. So Andrex goes defensive here. You can just see how I can, I've got a big brake advantage. I was hoping to go for the cut back there, but Andrex, I think Andrex read that because he kept his car on the apex. I couldn't do what I was planning to do. <laughs> so I've had to come in behind again. And we're also getting to this point in the race actually where the uh, magical fuel weight suddenly hits and we can race nice and easy in a really bizarre way. There's a point in this where the fuel weight becomes nice, so it becomes like a go-kart. Look how close it gets that puddle, by the way. That's what I've been trying to do all race. And through, there we go. Look at that. That puddle is massive. If you hit that, by the way, you fly it. You're going spinning. Um, the you know, the whole hangover song, you spin me. That's what, that's what end up happening there. Even so, we continue racing and we catch up to Andrex again. So you can see we've got a bit better, uh, we're a bit better through the corners. And you just see the BMW, that tail wagon. It does struggle on the power, does the BMW. We know the Audi is good on acceleration straight out. It doesn't have as much issues. I'm assuming that's because it's an MR car, where the BMW is obviously a front engine rear wheel drive car. It's going to struggle a lot more because there's less weight over the rear wheels. We have 10 minutes now to try and get this sixth position and then potentially try and get fifth. Now, Zali's too far ahead of Steve, really, to even imagine getting that position. You never know what can happen in a race, of course, so um, so we've just got to keep pushing at this point. And we know Vernox is behind us as well. So you just see Andrex gets a really a much better run through the corner that time. And uh, believe it or not, this is live streamed, by the way, this race. Uh, not by me, but we've got commentators in Fizzy and Kodiak, and they do a brilliant job. And this whole, this whole end of the race was just me and... Andrex and Fernux all having a crazy battle and Steve as well it was Steve earlier on in the crazy battle uh, when we were two by two uh, but to, uh, as I say we're just trying to eye up where Andrex having issues you just see Andrex has an issue there into the corner so I know he's struggling a little bit with the braking um, and with the accelerating so I can pick and choose where I want to uh, want to do this this is my place because look how close if I get close to the puddles like that look at the advantage I get so I'm thinking at this point if I can do that but just do it a bit quicker I can look to the inside. I'm just trying to scare Andrex a little bit, a bit like what I did with Rilo, um, but it doesn't work this time. Andrex is very well aware of where I am. And uh, we continue racing. Oh, God, we've got nine minutes to go now. Nine minutes, and this, this honestly, this has been one of the, my favorite races, like, ever in Project Cars 2, because it's so just, it, it's good. It's well organized. They're very strict on penalty. Oh, <laughs> I got really scared there because I thought I was going into the back of Andrex. Uh, it's well organised. Uh, you know, penalties are upheld. They look into incidents. We've got good commentary and 30 cars. Honestly, the fact you see 30 cars on track, although it's gone down a little bit to 24, but, you know, it's meant to be a 32-car grid. It's just great. It look, visually, it looks amazing. And you've seen that, you know, with other games. So, oh, there we go. So we saw that. Steve's done this exact same mistake. So I actually think here that I've got got it at this point. I'm thinking, yes, this has got to be it. But you just see <laughs> Andrex there just pulling up there. Uh, I was hoping Steve would stay on the inside a little bit. Uh, but I've got to keep pushing. It gets very close again. But we don't do it, unfortunately. Got to keep, uh, we've got to come back behind Andrex. But as I say, the big fields make make this for me. When, when when you see a big field, it just looks awesome. It gives a commentator so much to talk about. There's great action going on throughout the field, um, and the vari variation in the field as well. 
So you can see Steve is struggling now. So we're back into a four-way battle for this fifth position. Um, and we've got seven minutes, 50-odd seconds to go. Um, I actually think it's more than that because I think Jardia gets another lap in on the zero. Look at the four-wheel drift there from Andrex. I <laughs> did not see that when I was uh, putting this video together. That's absolutely stunning control uh, as we come through the last corner. So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, Andrex and Steve, you battle, and we'll have the same sort of thing that we did about eight minutes ago. Where you two were side by side, and I tried to go for a cheeky move up the inside. Let's try and go for another cheeky move. As we out of that corner, you can see how just the car is dead twitchy uh, in this weather. It is great fun. This uh, live track 3.0 really is just like the dogs <laughs> in a nutshell. Uh, as uh, you can just see, Andrex looking on the inside. Uh, and uh, he then blocks me off there. So good racing. And I'm thinking, excellent. Come on, come on. Someone make a mistake. You just see there, I get a bit of um, a jump on him. I try to avoid him, but then I get pulled in by the grass. Uh oh. That's trouble. Vernox is going to get close at this point. So I, I'm going to maybe have to look defensive. Don't have to at this point. Continue racing. Look how close we get to Andrex. That corner is treacherous, honestly. Downhill. This wet at this point. Ooh, it's scary. As uh, we continue racing. And Andrex just goes defensive there. And I've got to be more careful about touching the curbs. That really is not the best move that I did there. Um, as we continue on. Again, I'm trying to do that cut back. You can just see the power there. And again, we managed to keep up with the BMW this time. Continue on towards the end of this lap. What lap's this? Lap number 32. Uh, our fastest lap 38.5 which I was pretty pleased with actually um, one thing I haven't told you actually during this race is I haven't had much practice at this track I think I did about 20 minutes in the dry beforehand and I did a couple of laps in the wet then we went straight into the racing so you know uh, the same thing's going to happen this week with Silverstone a little bit because I don't have time off work but the week after I've got a week off which is going to see lots of videos on the channel but also me uh, actually practicing quite hard for whatever race is next unless it's a high altitude track then I'll probably just turn up again because there's no real point in me practicing unless the patch comes out but look up ahead now Andrex side by side with Steve again is he going to break a bit later this time he does break later does break later Steve gives him room oh a slight contact look how close I cut to them there oh I have to let off a lot there um, to avoid hitting Andrex, I was worried that I'd actually hit him there, you know, with a ping distance. But I had no damage, so I assumed I didn't get any damage. I think Andrex may have said something on Discord, like Steve just needs to give him a little bit more room there. Perhaps does, because it was very, very close. And then Andrex just makes a mistake there into that right-hander. I've got to be careful of Vernux, but Vernux just appears, so I can stay where I am. Don't have to do any defending yet. Oh, but the, I hope you're enjoying this racing. I mean, if you're still watching after 28 minutes... I really do hope you are because I've, I thought this is, as I say, as I keep saying, one of the best races I've ever been involved in, in on Project Cars 2. It was absolutely fantastic fun. Uh, just the wet weather, you know, that puddle. Oh, I clip it there. I remember doing that, actually, because the wheel went all weird. <laughs> uh, all weird. Oh, that's a point, actually. I've not mentioned my wheel is on the blink, uh, I think, for those interested. So my second T300 is uh, really on its way out which is a bit frustrating it's on its it's another different problem I've had six different problems with that thing now so I'm not sure I'm gonna get another one I'll uh, I have got a spare G29 so it's not the end of the rating or videos or anything um, thankfully um, but even so just to let you know with that so we're coming into the first corner once again and you can just see Andrex struggling a little bit we get a good run. look at that run this time but uh, we're trying to <laughs> trying to get the boot, but look at that, we instantly got the slipstream, and Drake starts, but look at that, look at that speed, that is incredible stuff, and I think the BMW is only 30 odd horsepower different, not 50, I did try and go for an absolute massive, like, challenge under braking, it didn't work out, nearly lose the rear end, I'm going to have to defend from Vernox this time, because Vernox is going to be all over the back of me, look at the slipstream now, look at how much he instantly starts gaining on me, so he's going to go to the left, I'm going to stay to the right, in the braking zone, it's going to get very close, I outbreak Vernox by a tiny bit, so here I'm just trying to use the curb to my advantage, stay tight, I've got the advantage, but Vernox is going to have a bit of a run on me again, that BMW very strong in the straight line, if he can get the grip down, so I'm going to, oh well, I'm going to have to give him room, but don't have to at that point. I can come across, take a later apex. Just gets me through that corner. It gives me a, quite a good run. So we advance one lap to try and catch up to Andrex. And we have caught up again. 
So through my mind at this point, I am thinking, do I only have one lap or do I only have two? Because I can't remember in Project Cars 2 whether the timer ends and then it's just finishing the race there or whether it's where the leader finishes. So at this point, I'm thinking, right, I might only have one lap here. So I've got one opportunity to get Andrex to get this sixth position. Can I do it? Let's find out. So we start what I believe is the final lap initially or what I, my thought was going into this. We do have another lap, by the way, as you can probably tell by the length of the video. So we head towards the first corner and I've got quite a gap to gain, but we absolutely nail that first corner that time. You see the wiggle there. We're actually on the limit. We're ahead of our uh, personal best at the moment uh, as we continue on. But you can just see Andrex pulling away a little bit here, but we know we're strong under braking. I'm not going to break quite as late as I did before. Um, but we are going to break late. And as you see, we get very close. So I'm thinking, yes, come on. Have a bit of slip in your wheel. Have a bit of slip. Have a bit of slip. Just a little bit there, but it's not enough. So obviously the only reason I can keep up with him at this point is because I've had the better grip out the corner. Uh, but then Andrex goes defensive. Good defensive moves. We switch lines here. So I'm, again, I'm trying to go for the outbreaking method. Um, and um, go around the outside. This is a very dangerous move. But Andrex gives me just enough room there. Seriously well played. Uh, and I have no idea where he is at this point. He just suddenly appears out of nowhere. And Andrex is going to do exactly what I did to Vernux um, a few laps earlier. So, at this point, I realise it's actually another lap in the race because it's not come up with final lap. And I know Giardia has passed the line because we're over one minute behind uh, Giardia now. So, I know I've got one or two more attempts in me to try and get this position. So, I'm thinking about where I've had the opportunities. And the main opportunity is at the end of the straight, at that really, really complex corner. It's where I've seen Andrex make the most mistakes. Um, it's where I've made the most mistakes believe it or not, in this race. I've just not shown them all. Uh, but it's where I'm stronger under braking. And I can sort of get the power on early. So, that is my aim at this point. That I want to get as close as I did the last lap to try and get close. Look, you can see I'm smiling because I, I, I sort of understand what's going on here. I've got one opportunity. First corner. Here we go. Just make a little bit of a mistake there. Run slightly wide, but it doesn't affect me too much there. Uh, lose about a tenth or so, but it's not too bad. We can continue pushing. We know we're strong in this next corner. We've got a good slipstream. We had a good run out that corner, if you notice. The time is improving all the time as well. That's because the car is much lighter. Look at that, 7.4 litres of fuel into this right hand. The Jardier's finished now. Congratulations to Jardier. And Leon's probably just finished now as well. Um, so, as you see, I'm too far behind Andrex at this point. I'm really frustrated. Come on, go, car, go. Push, push, push. Uh, so, I'm continuing to push. But, look at that. What happened there? Some weird teleportation. Um, and it's thrown Andrex off. Andrex hits me. Obviously, that's no fault of his own. He's just been thrown off completely by the game. Vernox goes on the inside. Andrex gives me that position. Now, I don't feel good about having that position because it wasn't a fair move. Obviously, Vernox doesn't as well. Two very clean races. I've already said this. Vernox gives the position back. Now, in my head, I am already thinking, do I give it back? But should I? Because he gave it me. Do like should I shouldn't I basically uh, and you're gonna see me properly think about this you know I'll, I'll rub my nose and I'm, I'm thinking and I, I decide at this point I'm gonna give it back I decide because I I want to get a position fairly I don't like the fact that you know that happened it sort of ruined the battle so I already know at this point on the last corner I'm going to give Andrex this position back so you'll see me just stay to the right hand side let him go and then I'll go full power again once I know he's passed Fair play to Andrex, honestly, it was absolutely cracking racing. Fair play to Vernux, uh, we had an absolutely magnificent battle. I really hope you enjoyed that race because, as I say, that's one of my favourite races. Um, rather than mess about here this time, I continue on just round. Um, as I say, I hope you enjoyed that race. 34 minute video, how crazy is that? Uh, finishing uh, results are there. Thanks very much for watching. Another video playlist there if you want to watch another one. My logs there if you want to subscribe. Congratulations to Jardier and Leon. I'll see you in the next video.